So in this video, we are going to learn how to solve the powers of complex numbers. So given a complex number, say z, this can be expressed in polar form as r times into bracket cos theta plus j sin theta. Now let's call this equation 1. We can further simplify this to have z equals r polar theta where r is called the modulus and theta is the argument now according to the morvis theorem z exponent n is equal to r polar theta or exponent n and this can be simplified as r exponent n polar n times theta so basically if you have r polar theta all exponent n then you want to raise r to the power n and then multiply n by the angle theta similarly from equation 1 z exponent n is equal to r multiplying into brackets cos theta plus j sine theta all exponents n so this becomes r exponent n into brackets cos n theta plus j sine n theta and this theorem is true for all positive negative and fractional values of n and it is used to determine the powers and roots of complex numbers However, in this video, we are going to focus on finding the powers of complex numbers. Now we have two examples here. Solve the powers of these complex numbers in polar form. We have a 2 polar 20 all cube and then 4 polar 30 all exponent 5. Now let's solve these together. So for a, we have 2 polar 20 all exponent 3 now we said that given that z exponent n is equal to r polar theta all exponent n then we simplify this as r exponent n polar n times theta so let's apply this here so this becomes 2 exponent 3 polar 3 times 20 2 exponent 3 is 8. So we have our answer to be 8 polar 60. Now for B, we have 4 polar 30 degrees, all exponent 5. So this becomes 4 exponent 5 polar 5 times 30. 4 exponent 5 gives 1024 polar 5 times 30 we have 150 so that is 150 degrees so basically this is how to solve the powers of complex numbers now in the next section we are going to consider more complex examples so let's try these examples together express the complex numbers in both polar and rectangular forms express the complex numbers in both polar and rectangular forms so here we have two complex numbers which are all in the rectangular form so first of all we need to resolve these complex numbers in the polar form then we can use the Morvis theorem to solve the powers and then leave our answers in both polar and rectangular forms so these are exactly what we are going to do so let's solve for i so for i, we can say that let z equals 6 plus 5j. Now this complex number is in the rectangular form. We need to convert to the polar form. So we are going to draw the Agand diagram. We have the imaginary axis. We have the real axis. This is the origin. We have the x component to be 6 
and the y component to be 5. So it means that we have our complex number appearing in the first quadrant. So that is z equals 6 plus 5j. This is r and then we have the angle theta formed between r and the positive x axis. Now let's find r which is the modulus and then theta the argument. So we have r equals the square root of x square plus y square. We have x to be 6, so 6 square, y to be 5, 5 square. 6 square is 36, plus 5 square is 25, so 36 plus 25, and that is equal to the square root of 61. So we have the square root of 61 units, that is the value of r. Now let's find the value of theta. So we have theta to be equal to tan inverse of the absolute value of y divided by x. So this becomes tan inverse of we have y to be 5 and then x to be 6. So tan inverse of 5 over 6 gives 39.81 degrees. So this is the value of theta. Therefore, our complex number z equals 6 plus 5j can be represented in polar form as square root of 61 polar 39.81 degrees. So according to De Morvis theorem, z exponent n is equal to r exponent n polar n times theta. So in our case, z exponent 3 is equal to the square root of 61 exponent 3 polar 3 times 39.81. And that gives 476.43 polar 119.43. So basically, we've been able to represent this complex number, that is 6 plus 5j exponent 3, in the polar form. So this is the polar representation of z cube. Now since z equals r polar theta is equal to r cos theta plus j r sine theta, then we say that z cube is equal to, we have r to be, 476.43 so 476.43 cos the angle that is 119.43 plus j times 476.43 sine 119.43 so finally we have z cube equals 476.43 cos 119.43 gives negative 234.10 plus j476.43 sine 119.43 gives j times 414.95. So this is the rectangular representation of the complex number. Now let's move on as we saw for ii. So for ii, we have the complex number 3 minus 8j all exponent 5. So let z equals 3 minus 8j. Therefore, we need to represent this in the polar form. We have the x component to be 3, so that is 3, and the y component to be negative 8. So negative 8 is here. 
which means that we have our complex number z occurring in the fourth quadrant so let this angle be alpha that is the angle formed between r and the positive x-axis taken in the clockwise direction so first of all let's find the value of r so r is given by the square root of x square plus y square we have r equals the x component is 3 so we have 3 square plus y component negative 8 so we have negative 8 square 3 square is 9 plus negative 8 square is 64 so 9 plus 64 we have 73 so that is the square root of 73 units now let's find the angle alpha so alpha is given by tan inverse of the absolute value of y divided by x we have tan inverse of y that is the absolute value of y is 8 and then that of x is 3 so tan inverse of 8 over 3 gives 69.44 degrees so this is the value of alpha now since we are interested in finding the angle formed between the positive x-axis and r taken in the anticlockwise direction that is this angle we are going to subtract alpha from 360 therefore we say that theta is equal to 360 degrees minus alpha which is 69.44 degrees so that gives 290.56 degrees now the reason why we are going to subtract alpha from 360 is that we are interested in the angle formed between the positive x-axis and r taken in the anticlockwise direction so from this point through to this point is 360 degrees now since we are interested in the angle formed between this point through to this point if we know the full angle which is 360 then we want to subtract this small angle from 360 to get the angle theta so we have theta equals 290.56 degrees therefore z in the polar form is represented as the square root of 73 polar 290.56 five six degrees so this is the value of z now we are interested in expressing z exponent 5 in the polar and rectangular forms so in the polar form we have z exponent 5 equals the square root of 73 exponent 5 polar 5 times 290.56 degrees so the square root of 73 exponent 5 gives 45,531. Polar 5 times 290.56 gives 1,452.8 degrees. Now the value of theta was found to be 1,452.8 degrees. Now this angle is greater than 360 degrees. So we need to subtract 360 degrees from this value as many as we can until we get a value that is less than 360 degrees. Therefore, 1452.8 degrees minus 4 times of 360 degrees gives 12.8 degrees. So we can simplify this as 12.8 degrees. So that is what we are going to use. So finally, we have z exponent 5 to be equal to 45,531 polar 12.8 degrees. So this is the polar representation of z exponent 5. Now to the rectangular representation of this complex number, z exponent 5 is equal to, we have z equals 
r polar theta to be equal to r cos theta plus j r sine theta so this becomes we have r to be four five five three one cos 12.8 degrees plus j times four five five three one sine 12.8 degrees so this becomes 44,399.53 plus j times 10,087.34. So basically, this is the rectangular representation of the complex number z exponent 5. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.